All right. Alright, nalalaglag. Pwede mo pa tayong tumayo. Uh, we're gonna worship in a, in a bit, no? Uh, but we're gonna pray for one another, no? Sabi po ng Psalm 92, verse 1, it says there, It is good to give thanks to the Lord. Pastor, ano po yung ipagpipray? Uh, thankfulness kay Lord. It is good to give thanks to proclaim your unfailing love and your faithfulness. You thrill me, O Lord. Okay, pag-pray mo na ma-thrill siya kay Lord. You thrill me, O Lord. And uh, so that we will sing for joy because of what you have done. And so, uh, let's just, you know, let's just, uh, Lord, I pray for the spirit of intercession to be upon us. Lord, uh, give us the grace to reach out to someone and thank the Lord for their life. Lord, I pray na we're gonna declare your faithfulness and even... Ma-thrill po kami sa pag-worship sa'yo. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Just go ahead and grab someone bago po tayo mag-worship kay Lord. Let's pray for one another. All right, let's pray together. Lord, it is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praises to the Most High. It is good to proclaim your unfailing love in the morning and your faithfulness in the evening. Lord, thank you for your faithfulness. Kahit traffic, nakarating kami rito, Lord. Lord, you thrill us, Lord God, for what you have done for us. Lord, we will sing for joy because of what you have done. Oh Lord, what great works you do and how deep are your thoughts for us. Lord, we worship you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Come on, let's all worship God this evening. In my weakness, you are strong. When I feel I can't press on, you renew this weary heart. You carry me through, you carry me through. When the last say I'm in need, you remind me I'm complete. For you always satisfy. You fill me anew, you fill me anew.
Say, in my weakness, you are strong. When I feel I can press on, you renew this weary heart. You carry me through, you carry me through. When the light says I'm in need, you remind me I'm complete. For you always satisfy. You give me a new, you fill me a new. Your grace abounds. It's all around. It knows no bounds. Ooh, ooh. Your grace abounds. It's all around. It knows no bounds. Ooh. Overflowing, that it, it never ends. Na kahit anong gawin natin, it will always be there. So let's declare. Our grace so bright, I'm brought to life. I fix my eyes, you're my delight. Our grace so bright, I'm brought to life. I fix my eyes on you. Our grace so bright, I'm brought to life. I fix my eyes. You're my delight A grace so bright I'm brought to life I fix my eyes on you A grace so bright I'm brought to life I fix my eyes You're my delight A grace so bright I'm brought to life I fix my eyes on you I fix my eyes on you For your grace that's abounding in our lives. Thank you for your grace never fails. Your grace is new. Your grace is enough for us. So right now we just want to give thanks. We just want to worship you. We just want to come from a point of gratitude, God. Thank you, Jesus. Son, 
Put out for the love of the Spirit, grace has come. You hold the keys to heaven, we see your kingdom come. The song will sound forever, grace has won. Come on, take this out. It covers us, it covers us. New day mercies and bless It covers all, it covers us. Grace above. It covers all, it covers all, it covers us. New day mercies and bless It covers all, it covers us. Grace above. God, saturate us with your spirit right now. We welcome you. Come on, sing it with me. How oh, precious is the flow that makes me wise. Thank you. 
Come on, sing it from your hearts. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. God, we thank you, Lord. We can just do this. We can just worship you. We can just praise you. We can just call on to your name, God, just because of your blood. And Lord, even as we worship, thank you, Lord, for reminding us of your goodness, of your kindness. Sino rito kaya mong sabihin talaga na yung Diyos na sinasamba natin ngayong gabi is good and kind. Ibig sabihin, mabuti siya. Tapos, di lang siya basta mabait. He is good and kind. Di ba? Palakpangan naman natin si God because He is good and He is kind. And when we describe 
God as good and kind, it's not just what our mind can conceive of what goodness and what kindness is. Because when we say that God is good, when we say that God is kind, we are referring that God is wholly good. There is this what we call holy goodness and holy kindness. Na yung katabi mo, pwedeng good naman yan, pwedeng kind naman yan. But when we refer that God is good and God is kind, it is on another level. And let me just encourage you, in Romans chapter 2, verse 4, it says here, Or do you presume on the riches of His kindness and forbearance and patience, not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? Sometimes we are here thinking, ah, I can worship God because the week has been so good. Wala masyadong guilt and shame. Pero alam mo, kaya kaya natin kumanta, kaya kaya natin i-declare that nothing but the blood of Jesus is that because He has been kind to you, not just now, but even to the whole week, and even we can expect that, that He will be kind and good to us through the whole year. You know, with that, I'm inviting everyone. Earlier, we prayed for one another. But this time, I'm inviting everyone just to pray on your own, with your own words. With every area of your life. San kaya nagiging mabuti yung Diyos sa you dun? He's, give, he's so patient. He's so kind. And because of that, He is inviting you to repent. That this thing, this area of your life, of our life, hindi naman talaga ganun ka-pleasing kay God. But because He is good, He is giving us chances to call upon His name. For one minute, why don't we just pray on our own? Lord, we thank you. We thank you for your immeasurable grace. We thank you for your immeasurable goodness. We thank you for your immeasurable kindness that is set apart from what, from how this world defines what goodness and what kindness is. Lord, thank you for being patient sa amin, God. Sa totoo lang, Lord, maraming mga bagay kaming ginagawa na hindi naman na dapat kapase-pasensya. But because yours is on a different level, Lord, you're still inviting us in your embrace. You're still inviting us in your presence. And Lord, because of that, Lord, maraming maraming salamat. Lord, because of it, Lord, we can really declare with our lips that you deserve every worship, every praise, that this heart, that this mind, that this can lips can utter God. You deserve it alone. Maraming marami pong salamat. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody will say, Amen and Amen. Okay. Good. Evening po sa ating lahat. And just before we take our seat, okay lang po ba? Just say hi. Diyan sa nasa likod mo, nasa harap mo, yung nasa katabi mo. And as everyone is taking their seat, let me just welcome you to our worship services. You are here at Victory Baliwag and we are a church that meets in multiple locations. And also, we exist just for two things and that is to honor God and make disciples. And we just have, our, uh, we just have some announcements. Here in Victory, we as a church... We want to pursue to honor God in every area of our life. And one way to do that is to honor Him through our relationships. With this, we invite all engaged couples. Ibig sabihin, kung balak mo nang magpakasal, balak nyo nang magpakasal, this year, uh, between the month of May to December 2024, we're encouraging you to join us for a pre-marriage seminar. This is scheduled for two consecutive Saturdays. February 10th and 17th. Again, if you are engaged, we are encouraging you to join us 
in this pre-marriage seminar. This seminar is designed to guide you on the path of building a strong, Christ-centered family. And for additional details or any inquiries, feel free to approach our friendly admins at the back. Kaway-kaway lang po yung mga nasa likod, yung mga admins po natin. Or you may look for Miss Marian Antolin at our admin office here in Victory, Baliwag. Next po natin sa announcement is, alam nyo po, February is approaching. And alam ko po, for those who are coupled already, yung mga kasal na po, uh, you might be, uh, you are preparing sur a surprise or a, uh, something for your uh, as a couple, for your wife or for your husband. And that's why we are inviting you. And this one is dedicated to honoring the both of married couples. We invite you to join us on February 14th at 6 p.m. in Victory Baliwag Main Hall. This is for a meaningful investment of 1,000 pesos per couple. Immerse yourselves in an evening that reinforces and rejoices in the beauty of your union. Reserve your place now by registering at the admin booth at the back after the service. Again, there's a couple's date. It will happen on February 14th. And again, kung mag po kayo, we are encouraging you to join us this date on, again, February 14th po, 6 p.m. And there is just an investment fee of 1,000 pesos per couple. And take note that registration is until February 10 only. And lastly, for our announcement, you know, Real Life is, in, is a Philippine non-governmental organization and exists to honor God by serving and empowering underprivileged youth of the Philippines through educational assistance, character formation, and leadership development. Ibig sabihin po, we're helping them not just for finances, not just... Uh, Para kumbaga may mapang enroll sila, but we are also helping them for their character to be formed and also to raise them as leaders. Here in Baliwag, we have 13 current scholars and four alumni. When one good news is one of our alumni, Joanna Baskina, just passed her licensure examination for teachers. Wala pa ka naman po natin si God doon. And another good news is application for scholarship. For the next school year is now open. Again, currently po, meron po tayong 13 scholars and we are hoping na makapagdagdag pa po for this year. And application is now open. Please look for Coach Dalia or Miss Marian if you are interested or know someone who might need this. And on behalf of Real Life Baliwag, thank you for your love and support to our scholars. We believe that as we give to the scholars and their family, we change a life and change a nation. And for us to be more encouraged of what's happening, not just in real life Philippines, but here in real life Baliwag, let us all watch this video. believing in us. Thank you, Pa, for believing in us. Thank you for believing in us. 
your support really helps us in the long run and um, I hope we'll bless you more than you have blessed us. Palakpakan naman po natin si Gadon. Again, those are not just 13 students. Those are 13 families. And because of that, we're reaching 13 families. Not just, again, through educational assistance, but even character formation, leader, leadership development, and also preaching the gospel to them. And for our sacrificial giving, let me encourage you with this verse. Coming from Psalm chapter 1, verse says 1 to 3. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in its season, and its, it le its leaf does not wither. In whatever he does, he prospers. You know, in this world we are living in, it's... Parang ang counting lang lagi natin pag, ah, blessed tong tao na to kapag... Okay sila financially. But the, the word of the Lord says, are we even counting ourselves as blessed when you have good friends? Are you even counting yourselves as blessed when the direction you are taking is the will of the Lord? Are you counting yourself blessed when the conversations you have is not just about another people, but you're talking about the word of God? Because that's the word of the Lord is saying. And not just that, as people of God, what are, our delight is not on of this world only, but taking delight on the law of the Lord. And, and papaano daw po yun? We meditate on it day and night. And ang ganda lang po nung illustration dito sa verse, He is like a tree planted by the streams of water that yields it, its fruits, its fruit in its season. My prayer for every one of us is that parang maging ding puno po tayo that we know that there is season for everything. Sometimes we're so, we're so urged, parang nagbamadali tayo, Lord, kailan mo ba ako ibibless? Kailan ba magkakaroon ng fruits yung labors ko? But you know, the word of the Lord says, there's season for everything. And ang maganda po dito, even in the waiting, our leaf will not wither. And whatever we, whatever we do, it will prosper. And why, with that, why don't we pray? Lord, we thank you. We thank you, God, because you have given us another kind of perspective of what is it to be blessed. Meaning to say, it's not just about finances, but really, God, having good friends, taking on your will, and we're talking about your word, and even taking the light on your law. Lord, may this sacrificial giving, may this be a delight on us. That it is not just a mere obligation. Kasi sabi mo, Lord, eh, but there is this delight because of your sacrifice. We can take part, Lord, and we can just respond, Lord, we can give everything to you. We trust you. Just like a tree planted by the streams of water, Lord, we will trust that there will be fruition in its time, God. And I pray that whatever they do, as we, as we, ask, our gui as we ask guidance to you, it will prosper, Lord. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may also give online through GCash. QR code is posted on screen or you may approach your admin at the back so you can scan the QR code. Also on your seats, meron pong mga envelope jan. You can write your prayer request and even your details to be connected to a small group. So that's all for this evening. Let us all worship God as we give. In my weakness, you are strong When I feel I can't press on You renew this weary heart You carry me through, you carry me through When the light says I'm in need You remind me I'm complete For you always satisfy You fill me anew, you fill me anew
Let's all rise in uh, reverence and worship as we read the Word of God. We're going to be in uh, Genesis chapter 3, starting at verse 1, page number 2 po ito. Page number 2, we have worshiped God through singing songs, through prayer, through fellowship, through our giving. And now we worship God through His living and active Word. Kung maliit po yung, yung sulat, ilapit ninyo. Yeah. Pag naman farsighted kayo, ilayo ninyo. Uh, so Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, page 2 po yan. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God has made. And he said to the woman, did God actually say, you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden. Neither you shall touch it, lest you die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight for the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then the eyes of both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves loincloths. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man and said to him, Where are you? He's, and he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid. Because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten of the tree of which I commanded you not to eat? And the man said, The woman whom you gave to be with me, she gave me fruit of the tree, and I ate. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this that you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. And the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, cursed are you above all livestock and above all beasts of the field. And on your belly you shall go, and thus you shall eat all the days of your life. I will put enmity between you and the woman, and the, between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his seal. To the woman he said, I will surely multiply your pain in childbearing. In pain you shall bring forth children. You desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. And to Adam he said, Because you have listened to the voice of your wife, and have eaten of the tree of which I have commanded you, you shall not eat of it. Cursed is the ground because of you. In pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles he shall bring forth for you, and you shall eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your face you shall eat bread, till you return to the ground, for out of it you were taken, for you are dust, and to dust you shall return. And the man called his wife's name Eve, because she was the mother of all the living, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Let us pray. Lord, thank you for that time of worshiping uh, through magnifying and reading your word. Lord, we declare and believe with all of our heart that your word, yes, was written thousands of years ago, but still speaks to us today. Because your word is living and active, may you speak to us in a new and living way. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, you can go ahead and take your seats. And as you take your seat, go ahead and uh, smile at your seatmate to the left and to the right. Pakita naman natin yung ngiti natin. And we are on our second week of our series entitled uh, Set Apart. Okay, can you say Set Apart? And what is set apart all about? It's about the biblical view of holiness. So, yung holy is coming from the Hebrew word kodesh. Kodesh means set apart. Okay? Kaya pag last week we talked about God is kodesh, God is set apart. Kaya pag inisip mo, tungkol saan kaya yung set apart? Tungkol kay God. Okay? And say, yes, we say God is love and all of those things. Pero pag binasa nyo talaga yung Bible, God is holy, holy, holy. Yun yung mas accurate na description about God. And I think to us, ang important sa series neto is a thorough, okay? Can you say thorough? Thorough understanding of holiness. 
Kasi pag sinabi niyong holy, minsan iba naisip niyo, no? Kailangan, kailangan one-sided yung buhok niya, yung mga ganun. Eh, paano na ako, di ba? Kahit kailan, hindi na ako magiging banal, di ba? Dapat walang tato, yung mga ganun. Yung, paano pag may tato, hindi na holy? I'm not saying, magpatato kayo, but, you know, sometimes our understanding is not thorough, okay? I'll give you an example. Si Peter, nag-define siya, at ito ibig sabihin, in application ng holiness, 1 Peter 1.13, Therefore, preparing your minds for action. Holiness is preparing your minds for action, for being sober. Sabi nga dun sa next verse, Therefore, geared up your loins okay, of your mind and be sober. So, in a way, kung ikaw ay lasing kahapon, makakapasok kaya sa trabaho ngayon. Kung nagpuyat ka kahapon, pinuno mo yung sarili mo ng kamunduhan, Baka kapag aral ka kaya ngayon, di ba? O puyat-puyat. No? But the point is, uh, holiness is not just magtatago ka lang, no? tapos wala kang gagawin. But really, the reason why you are setting yourself apart, you're being sober, is that you are preparing your minds for action, no? girding up your loins. So in essence, we're declare, declaring 2024 as an action-filled year. Okay? Anybody here believe na maraming mangyayari ngayon? 2024, okay? Come on, parang yung iba hindi naniniwala, no? Sabi nung iba, okay lang, pastor, kung ano lang yung nangyari ng 2023, copy-paste. Uh, hindi siguro, we want an action field. Sigurado ako, marami kayo yung kilalang action star, no? Sinong mga kilala nyo? Sylvester, Stallone, Eddie Garcia, sino pa? Ha? Huh? Coco, o nga pala si Coco Martin, mga action action man. And so, kasi nga yung uh, gird up your loins, ganyan yung ibig sabihin niya. Yan, so pag, yun yung example na lang yun, no? pag sinabing holy, yan yung itsura. Girding up your loins for action. Hindi yung, <laughs> yun pala yung holy, no? Hindi, yun ang itsura ng, ng holy. So, uh, yun yung goal natin. So, last week we talked about God is holy, God is set apart. And now, today, we're going to talk about holiness lost, okay? Nawala yung pagiging set apart natin. Now, ibig sabihin, uh, we're talking about sin, no? We're talking about sin na dahil sa unang kasalanan ay kung bakit maaaring ganito ang buhay natin Ngayon, okay, natutuwa ka ba sa buhay mo ngayon? Masaya ka ba sa lahat ng pinagdadaanan mo? Parang hindi, no? And maganda yung Genesis na pag-aralan because it's kind of like all of us are going and watching a movie in the middle. Pero actually, mas ma-appreciate mo yung pinagdadaanan mo ngayon kung sisimulan mo yung pelikula. And sino sa inyo, nanood ka ng Rewind? Sino sa inyo nanood kang fast forward? Ano ba? Ano ba mga pinanood ninyo? Di ba? Pagka nanood ka, nagbayad ka, di ba? Ah? Nagbayad na po ako misa. Gusto ko, papasok ako, kalahati na ng movie, ha? Ayoko yung simula. Di ba? Para, <laughs> kasi ayoko yung, ano, ayoko yung nauumpisahan. And somehow, all of us come into this broken world, a world that lost its holiness in the middle. And somehow, we're confused. Kaya pag pinag-aralan mo yung Genesis 3, you somehow understand where we're coming from and why we're here and how this holiness that is lost is gonna be restored in the coming days and even in the coming season. So, ang example pa niyan, uh, pag, ang set apart purpose natin ay tayo ay pag tinignan ka ni God, nagre-reflect pabalik yung image niya. Uh, honest, nag, nag research po ako ng mga Jewish commentaries, traditional commentaries, bago daw dumating ang Genesis 3, all of us are luminous. Ano yung luminous? Nagliliwanag. Di ka may katabi mo. Yeah. Ang dilim niya, di ba? <laughs> Broken world eh. Di ba? Parang luminous, nagliliwanag. Oh, I'll give you an example. Di ba si Moses, nung dumaan yung glory ni God, nakatalikod pa siya nun, ha? Pero pagbaba niya, he had to even wear a veil because he was luminous. Nagliliwanag pero nung nagkasala, parang nawala yung liwanag. Alam niyo bang we are made to last forever? We are not meant to die. 
Kailangan nag-glow yung buong, buong eternity, you glow. And yet, maniwala kayo sa hindi, dati talaga one-sided ako. Epekto po ito ng, wag niyo na po nga, bakit may lahi po ba kayo? Oo, may lahi kami ng makasalanan. <laughs> <laughs> Kaya ganyan. Alam mo, Timmy, katabi mo, maganda yan dati. <laughs> Gwapo rin yan dati. Eh, gwapo pa rin naman ngayon. So, <laughs> kaya lang napansin natin. Kaya gusto natin itong ma-restore. Kasi sabi ng Genesis 1.31, bago pa dumating Genesis 3, God saw all, saw all that He had made. Can you say all? And it was... Good. Ibig sabihin, hindi totoo na broken yung world from the very beginning. Merong simula ito. Kaya nagkaroon ng murder. ba diba, nung nag-fall, nag-murder na si Cain. Merong wickedness, violence, pride, and all manner of ungodliness. And so that is what we want to understand. The nature of sin the effects of sin, and the solution for sin. Yan yung pag-usapan natin according to 21 verses that we read. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, ready ka na ba? Sa kabila naman, are you ready? Yan. So, <laughs> bago lang yan, magpapasalamat muna tayo. 108 po yung umatend na sa ating Bustos Discipleship Day. Meron po akong ano, suggestion na hashtag Para kay Jesus ang bustos. Yeah! Pwede ba yun? Okay lang sa inyo yan. Oh, Pang-commercial na yun. Ah. Hashtag, para kay Jesus ang bustos. So, kunwari nag-victory group kayo at napili niyo yung mga coffee shop banda ron, pagka nag-post kayo, lagyan niyo ng hashtag, para kay Jesus ang bustos. Okay. Puntahan na natin. The first idea is the nature of sin. Ang ang ibig sabihin ng nature is yes nagkakasala sino sa inyo nagkakasala ka nagkakasala okay yung iba hindi na bakit kaya nandito ka pa no parang at pala ano ka na perfect ka naman na so ibig sabihin kailangan mo maintindihan paano tayo nakakarating doon sa lugar na ayaw mo sumunod kay Lord mas gusto mo yung gusto mo kaysa yung sabi ni Lord at saka Sa dami po ng solusyon, mga batas sa gobyerno dito sa Pilipinas, sa buong mundo, alam niyo po ako laging pinagmimitingan, what's wrong with us? We want to know what's wrong. Kasi if we, if we know what is wrong, then we can fix it. Kaya lang po, to every, to a hammer, every problem is a nail. no? Uh, iba-iba pong boses yan. Ano? Naintindihan niyo po ba yan? Kung, kung, kung martilyo ka, Ang isip mo, lahat ng problema, pako. <laughs> ah, yan? Ah, martilyo lang yan. Kasi yun lang kasi alam natin. And maybe our problems are social. Okay? Social. Ibig sabihin, kailangan walang mayaman mahirap. Sige, ayusin natin yung mga mga classes. And, 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 and you know, I think maybe 80 years ago, sobrang nag-full force ang communism. No? And, and yet, did it fix our problem? Parang marami pa rin. Problem. O sige, baka economic yung problem. No? We need an economic solution. And yet, we have seen people who really are rich financially and yet it seems that there are still problems. Ano kaya talaga ang totoong kailangang ayusin ang mga problema? Ah, siguro psychological. No? Alam nyo, ang Pilipino, napaka-communal niyan. Kaya lang, nung dumating yung... So, ibig sabihin, it's all about community care, no? Pero, nung dahil sa pandemic, nagkaroon na ng self-care. Yeah. Self-care. Yung parang, sige, okay lang na. hindi It's okay not to be okay, no? So, tinan nyo, nagsiswing lang yan, eh, no? May, may moment yan, may... Ang solusyon, community. Pero mapapagod ka rin, no? Self-care naman. <laughs> Tapos, pagka nag-self-care ka... Parang na-miss ko na sila. Eh, eh, alam mo yun? Ano kaya talagang solusyon? Ano? Um, and sometimes people would say the problem is chemical. Yung talagang baka ano lang, may kailangan lang inumin or uh, may kailangan lang mga regimen na gawin. And yet, maybe you have done all of these things. And it seems that our problems 
are still not fixed. So what is wrong with us? And the Bible tells us it is sin. Uh, now, paano tayo nakakarating doon sa sin? Balikan natin yung verse. Sabi ng verse 1, Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did, the, did God actually say, You shall not eat of any tree of the garden? Now, what is the starting point of sin? Siyempre, the deceiver. No? Si Satan, the serpent. And we know that it is him. No, you can read all you want. But that is Satan. At ang unang ginagawa ni Satan is not actually to give you bad thoughts. No? Kasi madalas pag nag-iisip ka, pag tinitem ka ng, ni Satan, di ba? Kunwari ngayon, nakikinig ka ngayon, may bumubulong eh. Mag-CR ka, mag-CR. Yung mga ganun. <laughs> Dikit mo na mata mo. Yung mga ganun. <laughs> Kala mo ganun, no? Hindi. Alam mo ba? Si Satan, magko-quote ng verse. Oh my goodness. Uh, di ba? Kahit naman si, 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 si Jesus, di ba? Nung nasa mountain of temptation, paano siya tinitemp? May verse, mga kapatid. <laughs> May verse. Kasi, saan ang galing yan? Kinocote niya yung verse 16, 17 ng Genesis 2. Si God nagsabi nito, ha? And the Lord commanded the man saying, You may surely eat of every tree of the garden, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat. For in the day you eat of it, you shall surely die. Ang una na pong makita dyan, di ba? Ang nakalagay dun sa isa. Uh, you shall not eat. Pero ang sinabi naman ni Lord, you may surely eat. Ang dami-dami namang puno. Pero meron lang isa na hindi pwede. Ano po ang tawag sa prutas na ito. Okay? A, apple. <laughs> Alam nyo, so, ako, para lang medyo magets nyo kagad, no? Ang simula po ng sin is misquoting the words of God. Oh my goodness. It's like just, you're quoting the verse and you're, you're communicating it a half-truth and a whole lie. So, yun ang problema, hindi yung walang Bible. Hindi yung walang Diyos. Pero kung hindi, minimisrepresent mo yung God. And now, and now you know why we spend so much time in even buying these things. Kasi alam natin, doon galing yung kasalanan. Eh. It's not even na walang Bible, but it's about even half-truth Bible. And whole lie Bible na may mga inhibitions tayo, kaya nga minsan talagang we, we, we're trying to just be careful and just really quote what God says and just really observe and apply what He said. Wala namang sinabing do not, no? but although may sinabi, uh, so anong, I'll give an example, misquoting, no? ang alam ko talaga, apple to eh. Naalam niyo ba? Kanina nga binasa ko, Lord, All this time, kala ko Apple. Android pala. <laughs> Hindi Apple, Android. Xiaomi. <laughs> Huawei. <laughs> Cherry. <laughs> Walang sinabi. Hindi ko alam kung saan ang galing. Ito, now, you, you, you now understand. Paano ka pinoproseso ng kaaway? Nagko-quote ng verse with a half-truth, misrepresenting God, even. Um, tumagot pa yung babae, no? medyo naalala niya. Sabi niya, hindi, hindi, hindi. We may eat of the fruit of the tree in the garden, but God said, you shall not eat of the fruit of the tree in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it. Aba, bawal ng hawakan. Okay, but tingnan nga natin uli yung sinabi ni Lord. May sinabi bang bawal hawakan? Diba, Mera, dapat di, dapat di na lang niya kinain, ginang ganun, ginang ganun, ganun na lang niya. Ooh, wow, hindi siya pwede kainin, pero pwede niya hawakan. Hindi pwede. Ang sabi, bawal, hawakan. So, hindi na lang po yung half-truth Bible, nagdadagdag pa. <laughs> Dinadagdagan yung sinasabi ni God. Now, bakit importante ito? Ito ang nature ng sin. 
It's not even that God is not real. Sinabi ba ng satanas na walang Diyos? Wala, pati siya na naniniwala si Diyos. Hindi po ako naniniwala sa atheist. Eh, simple lang eh. Sino sa inyo may nanay? Yan, yung katabi mo, kung mukhang galing sa ano yan, Mars, ganyan. No? Di ba? Tell mo, may nanay yan ha. Yung nanay ba niyan, may nanay din. <laughs> eh, yung nanay ng nanay niya. <laughs> yung nanay ng nanay ng nanay niya. Da- Siyempre, sasagot kayo. Baka yung nanay ng nanay ng nanay niya, unggoy. Ah, okay. O sige, pagbigyan natin ha. Sino yung nanay ng unggoy? <laughs> Di ba yung unggoy may nanay din? <laughs> No, kakaganon mo, maisip mo, mayroon talaga pinanggalingan to, hindi mo pwedeng... So, kahit si Satan, hindi siya nagko-communicate na magkang maniwala kay God. Pero, i-misinterpret mo si God. Specifically, His goodness. Na hindi good si Lord. At good siya, good lang siya sa iba. Pero hindi sa iyo. And now, You don't have to trust God to give you the good things. You'll have to take it for yourself. Na hindi mo na kailangan pagtiwalaan si God. Kailangan mo tong kunin para sa iyo. Kasi good siya, pero hindi siya good sa akin. And I'm getting ahead of myself, pero I think it's important for us to understand. Kasi up to this point in time, Napaka-dependent nila kay God. Meaning, hindi nila kailangan malaman kung anong tama at mali. Ang inisip nila, yung tama at mali, depende sa Kanya. Ngayon, pag hindi mo na pinagtitiwalaan, look at this, ang tinitira ng sin is trusting God. Not really the presence of God, but your trust in God. You know He's there, but do you trust Him? Kasi pag hindi mo siya pinagtitiwalaan, You now have to get the good things for yourself. Tignan niyo po yung sabi ng Proverbs 3. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Should you lean on your own understanding of left, wrong and right? No. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. And He is gonna make your crooked paths straight. And if we live in an unholy world, then therefore, napaka malamang na hindi tayo sober. Yung bang gegewang-gewang talaga yung path ng buhay na, okay ka lang ba? Oo, diretso tayo, diretso. <laughs> diretso ka. Di ba, anong sabi ng laseng? Hindi ako laseng. <laughs> yung, pag sumagot siya ng gano'n, laseng yun. Uh, eh, laseng sa mundo, meaning the worldliness and that's the reason why we tend now to trust in ourselves, in our own good works, rather than being dependent on God. Ang iisip ko lang, bakit kaya hindi ka na magtitiwala kay God? Kasi hindi mo tinatrust yung na siya ay good. Now, tingnan natin yung verse, no? Verse 16, 17. So, pinunta natin yun, let's, do not touch it, lest you die, and then, pinuntahan dito, you shall surely die. Now, half-truth, Dagdagan yung truth. Tapos, ito naman, completely rejecting the word of God. Okay? Sabi ng Satan, you will not surely die. Sabi ni Lord, di ba mamatay ka? Alam mo yung Hebrew word ng death ay mot. Okay? Mot. And it basically means separation. Sino po sa inyo, namatayan ka na ng loved ones? ba? Diba? Ano, ano yung pag namimiss mo sila? Ano talaga yung epekto ng death? Gusto mo silang makita, pero hindi na pwede. That's what you call separation. Nawalay ka sa iyong minamahal. Now, ito, relationship to kay God. So, nung nag-sin, nag-disobey kay God, now you are being separated from God. Now, bakit ka mamamatay? Sino ang source of life? Sino? Saan galing ang lahat ng buhay? Si God, di ba? So the more that you are closer to Him, the more that you're following Him, the more life. But the more you are going away from Him, then you are going away from the source of life. 
And so, in the end, alam naman natin na separate si Adam and Eve kay God and ultimately, Adam and Eve died. And like what I said kanina, we are supposed to live forever. Hindi po totoo na okay lang na namamatay tayo. There's a reason why we die. It's because of the brokenness of not trusting God. Sabi pa nga ng verse 5, no? hindi ko na nalagay. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Alam niyo bang nilokot sila ni Satan? You will be like God. Samantalang basahin niyo yung Genesis 1-2. We are already made in the image and likeness of God. Niloloko tayo ng kaaway na, na meron kang kailangang gusto na wala sa'yo where in fact, umpisa pa lang, binigay na ni Lord sa'yo. Why are you desiring things that is already there? Uh, mas malamang ang tawag doon, deception. Ito yung mga unang scammer. Sino sa iyo nakaka-receive ka ng mga text? Di ba? Oh, mga text. Pagod na pagod na siguro sila mag-text, no? Pano yung text araw-araw? I-click ito. <laughs> Di ba? Parang magkakaroon ka. Um, and so, ano po yung nangyari? Ano ba yung mga dinidesire natin? Good things, delighting things, and desire of wisdom. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, ano ba yung mga bagay na dapat pinagtitiwalaan mo si God? Ito yung good things. When the tree is good for food, and it was a delight to the eyes, and it was to be desired to make one wise. Sino kaya mag-aangat sa akin? That I'll be better than everybody else. That, you know, yung mga desires ko, that, that is pleasing to me. Baka hindi bibigay ni God sa akin to. I have to take it for myself. Um, Tinan nyo, anong nangyari? And she desired to make one why she what? She took. She took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Nawawala yung trust natin kay God kasi feeling natin He's withholding good things. And so, um, yung sin, ang efekto niyan, kaya minsan ayaw natin pumunta ng church. Ang epekto kasi niyan, kasi pag pumasok ka sa discipleship, ang nangyayari, not my will, but your will be done. Parang ganun, di ba? Kaya lang, para mamuhay ka ng ganun, kailangan may tiwala ka talaga kay God. <laughs> Pero kung wala kang tiwala kay God, hindi mo gagawin yun. Kaya nga, ayaw mo sa victory group eh. Kaya ayaw mo ng accountability. Kasi now, we would be accountable to live not for our what we want, but for what God wants. Kaya alis na lang tayo sa church because we cannot live our lives as we see fit. I know what's best for me. I trust myself. Trust your heart. Diba mga ganun? Pero siyempre, pag binasa mo yung Bible, anong sabi? Your heart is the most deceptive thing of all. Uh, so, wag mo raw, isamantalang yung mundo, sabi, follow your heart. Hindi. Follow God. Um, I'll give an example, no? Para natin malaman na si God talaga yung dahilan. Kunwari, wala ka dito, no? Li Siguro minsan nag-absent ka, tapos nagtuloy-tuloy na. Ang reason ay you want the good things. May offer kasi, no? Pag ginawa ko to ng 6 p.m. Sunday, susweldo ko ang $5. No? So, pinagpalit mo na ngayon itong service na to. Sige, 19. So, you don't have to, tr parang, do I have to trust God for this? Or I shall just get the $5 for myself? Kasi pag susunod ako kay God, sayang oas ko dito. Paulit-ulit naman yung joke nitong kalbong to. 
Five dollars na lang, ten dollars. Ako, I'll get it for myself. Pero ang hindi mo alam, pag naman dinedicate mo yung buhay mo dito, hindi ba ibibigay ni God sa iyo? Siya ang magbibigay. Now, it's no longer God blessing you with good things, the things that you do. It's, it's you. You have to take it for yourself. Now, pero balik tayo naman natin. Kunwari, linggo-linggo nandito ka. At in fact, four services a day kang nag-a-attend. Wow, talagang lampasa na, di ba? So, tas nag-volunteer ka lahat. Ikaw yung music team, ikaw yung nag-drums, ganyan. Now, that's fine. Pero kung ang puso mo nang gagaling sa, nako, kasi pag nagmintis ako ng Sunday, hindi ako ibibless ni Lord. Nako, mali pa rin. Kasi sa totoo lang, hindi naman si God yung sinusunod mo. Ginagamit mo si God para masunod yung gusto mo. And so now you see, we don't trust God. And that's the reason why we sin. We have to take the good things for ourselves. We have to take the desire to be wise for ourselves. Tignan nyo, no? Hindi tayo nagdidepende sa katalinuhan natin, but being dependent on the Word of God. I'm, I'm, I'm impressed, no? May mga doktor po dito. Minsan may mga matitinding operation yan. Tumatawag pa sa akin. <laughs> Pastor, pray for me. Tapos papaliwanag sa akin. Anong malay ko dyan? <laughs> Pastor, pag-pray mo ako kasi kailangan ng wisdom. Now, I mean, you know, you know a lot of things, but still, the doctor wants to be prayed for. Because we trust God to give us the good things, to give us the delight and even the desire. And, um, sabi ni Dr. Keller, patay na po yan, very credible theologian um, and very good testimony as I would think. Sabi niya, ano daw yung sin? Sin is taking anything and making that more important to God. Meron ka ng ibang pinagtitiwalaan. Hindi na si God. Yun ang simula, ang gitna, ang dulo ng kasalanan taking things for yourself rather than trusting God that is gonna give the good things, the delight, and even the wisdom. Um, yan ang nature of sin. Now, kung hindi kayo naniniwala, maniwala kayo kay John kasi kinote din niya yung Genesis 3. Sabi ni John, Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the desires of the flesh, diba yun yun, sounds family, no? Desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride of life, being wise, the pride of life is not from the Father, but is from the world. That is the nature of sin. Alam nyo kung bakit importante na mag-worship? Na kung maniwala kayo, wala pa akong taong hindi na, nakita na hindi na in love sa pera. Oh, maniwala ka. Yung pa in love, in love mo na sa mga ano mo, mga crush-crush, na kung maniwala ka. Kunting tigyawat lang ang katapat niyan, mawawala yan. <laughs> Ligo mo lang yan. <laughs> Pero yung pera, maniwala ka. Wala pa akong taong hin- nakita. Pag, pag hindi mo inuna talaga si God, may in love ka sa pera. Because if you have a lot of money, then you can get the good things for yourself. The delighting things. You can take pride in yourself. Pero sa totoo lang, you don't have to get it for yourself. God gives it to you. At yun ang totoong set apart. <laughs> that you depend on these things from God. Now, kung yun ang nangyari, okay, yun yung nature. Ano nga uli yung nature? Miniscoat. Hindi yung walang, hindi yung walang Diyos. Meron. Pero imimiscoat, imimisinterpret. Para ang dulo, you will doubt the goodness of God. So now, you no longer depend on God. You take what is good for you. You take the delight for you. And you take what will make you proud. 
Now, ano ang epekto nito? Sabi niya naman, ano? Yan. Alright, so this is the effects of sin. The effects of being, uh, of losing our holiness. Sabi po ng verse 10, and he said, I heard the sound of you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. O kaya, um, ito very clear, para lang sobrang makatch ninyo, medyo catchy. If you are no longer set apart, we are gonna stay apart. Okay? Pag hindi ka na set apart, we will stay apart. Stay apart from God. Stay apart from one another. Ibig sabihin, meron po itong relational distancing. Kapag nagko-commit ng sin, relationship with God and relationship with others. Now, pero may interesting pa akong nakita dyan, I hid myself. So, ibig sabihin, merong pang epekto ang kasalanan na kahit mag-isa ka lang, natatakot ka. Meron ba sa inyong ganun? Yung kunwari, nakapag-book ka mga, ano, talagang nag Alam niyo yung boreke? <laughs> kapag boreke ka, kaganong ka, di ba? Wow, I deserve this. Di ba? Wag ka. Tapos, ako po kung gano'n, paano kaya kung mamatay ka bukas? Ah, mamatay. <laughs> Relax ka nga dyan, di ba? Alam niyo yung epekto ng kasalanan. Takot ka. Hindi takot sa iba. Hindi na takot sa... Mag-isa ka lang. Ha? Takot ka sa sarili mo. You hid yourself. They're shame. Not from... Sarili mo lang. Nakakatuwa nga po. Well, hindi man ako tutuwa. No? Pero ang dami ko narinig na kwento, mga pastors natin sa Manila, bumibili ng haunted house. Nako, bargain. Napakamura. Walang gustong bumili. Kasi sabi niya, pag mag-isa ako, may naririnig ako. May mga ano, may tumatawag. <laughs> Pero yung pastor, pag siya na yung nakatira doon, wala naman siya naririnig. Wala naman siyang ano, baka dala-dala mo lang yung mga katatakutan mo, no? Kaya kung Christian ka, naku, walang magpaparamdam sa'yo, maniwala ka. Bumili ka ng mga haunted house, yayaman ka. Hindi, <laughs> meron na. Eh, naisip ko lang, mag-isa ka lang dyan. Sino kakausap sa'yo? Wala. It's, it's just, ang tawag po dyan ay in-check. Alam niyo, in-check? Insecurity. <laughs> Chinese ka naman, in-check. ka, wala na. Di ba, minsan, minsan okay naman yung kilay mo, di ba? Okay naman yung, okay ba? Parang hindi okay yung kilay ko. Parang okay naman eh. Di ba? But somehow we're trying to hide ourselves. Now, ito pa. Ang epekto ng sin is trying to control. Hiding, no? Hiding. Ang ibig sabihin ng hiding is trying to control what others see. Kinokontrol mo na ngayon kung ano yung dapat makita ng iba. Ito hindi to dapat makita. Itago yan. Ito lang yung dapat ipakita. Now, kung ngayon ang epekto ng kasalanan, nako, yung social media. <laughs> Sa tingin niyo ba, yung pinapakita nila, yun yung totoo? Hindi. Pinapakita lang nila yung gusto, yung likable and shareable. Hindi ba epekto ng kasalanan yun? And I'm not saying, makasalanan silang lahat, pero baka nga. <laughs> lahat naman tayo. Kaya ito pa, narinig na ba kayong tao? Ayoko ng taong plastic. Plastic letter F. <laughs> Ayoko nang, gusto ko yung totoo lang. Ayoko nang, uso pa ba yung Tupperware? Hindi niya alam yun eh, no? Uh, ako, totoo lang ako. Sabihin ko lang kung ano yung totoo. Anong to- alam niyo yung totoo? Wala naman totoo eh. Kasi kung lahat ng tao makasalanan, people want to control what others see about them. That is the effect of sin. You're so much concerned about covering of how you look. Alam niyo ba, talo na ng mga, natalo na yung mga technological giant. Ang number one na pinakamayaman sa buong mundo. Last year, December, Forbes. Number one, Brian Arnold. Owner ng LV. Lumang Vag. <laughs> Yun ang pinakamayaman. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin buong mundo ay bumibili ng pangtakit. 
at napakaraming perang ginagastos dito. And the goal is to control what others see. Kaya yung ote authentic, walang totoo, hindi totoo yan, maniwala ka. Mas malamang ganito yan, you will highlight what is wrong with others so that you can hide what is wrong from you. Ang tawag doon sa Tagalog, meritess. Meritess. <laughs> Kaya minsan ayaw nila sumali sa victory group. Tinan mo ha, sino sa inyo kahit alam mo namang hindi ka busy, di ba? O victory group tayo. Yo, baka mag-share tayo dyan. <laughs> Baka matanong tayo eh. Huwag na. Kaya minsan, naisip ko na lang, sa mga leaders natin, pag nag-VVG kayo, huwag nyo nang masyadong kamustahin. Basta mag-share na lang muna kayo ng word ko ano yung material natin, sundin nyo lang. Tapos sabihin nyo na, kag- oh, bago ka, ayoko mag-share ka. Share nothing. Okay? Share nothing. <laughs> Pero syempre, pag sinare mo na yung word of God, the word is living and active. So ngayon, kahit oy, ayoko mag-share ka, pero parang gusto mo mag-share. So sige, go. Di ba? Share ka. And now people are becoming more vulnerable. Doon mo na nakikita na pag vulnerable ng tao, nare-restore na siya ng gospel. Pero sa totoo, ayun yung sumali sa victory group. Kasi baka ma-meritess siya. Because te- people tend to not control The fault of others. Hindi nila kinokoveran, ano? pero we're highlighting the wrong of others so that we can control what others see in us. Uh, yan po ay epekto ng kasalanan. At alam nyo ba na primarily it's, it's in the mind. Kasi bago pa ho ito, sabi ng verse 25, And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. Wala namang tinatago and all and okay sila. Pero simula nung nagkasala, parang may nabago sa mindset. Naging Chinese, no? Naging insecure, no? And, and try to control what others are seeing. Um, eto pa, verse 8, sabi niya, And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day, And the man and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Alam niyo po yung walking in the cool of the day? Medyo inaral ko yung Hebrew context nito. It's about spending time. Diba? Pag, pag sinabi sa yung, unari, nag, nag, ano kayo, nag, uh, masyal kayo, tapos gusto mong makausap yung someone. Marabili tayong Coke. <laughs> Nag-promote pa Pepsi. <laughs> so, di ba? Tapos, samba dun lang mga ano. Tapos, di ba? Anong nangyayari pag naglalakad kayo, di ba? You're spending time. Gusto mong pag-usapan na hindi lang trabaho, hindi transactional, di ba? Kamusta ka na? Kamusta buhay-buhay? Spending time. Pero tignan mo si God, nag siyang maglakad. nag siyang mag- spend time. Actually, kinamusta nga niya si Adam. Hindi ko na lang nalagay. Sabi niya, hindi, kamusta? Where are you? Where are you in our relationship? Kamusta na? Kamusta na yung relationship natin? Alam mo, ang isang epekto ng kasalanan, we do not want to spend time with God. At mas malamang, transactional yung relationship kay God. Ang prayer, pengi noon. Lord, pengi naman ito. Panginoon, Panginoon, in Gcash name, Amen. <laughs> ha? Eh, tingnan mo, ganun yung relationship mo kay God, no? Ganun din yung relationship sa bawat isa. We don't want to walk with each other. We don't want to spend time. That is an effect of sin. They hide. Kaya sa totoo, hindi, f- kung ako tatanungin, ha, hindi primarily ang itsura ng mundong na-restore ay psychological, physiological, or chemical, or social. Family! Sa totoo, family yung na-restore. O sabi naman ni Joshua, di ba? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Tingnan mo, you want to spend time with one another, and you want to spend time with God. Kita mo lang yun doon. Siyempre sa trabaho kasi, medyo performance kasi yan eh. So, minsan mahirap nakita. Pero sa family, do we spend time with one another? Do we spend time with God together? Um, 
At ano pang epekto ng sin? Hindi marunong mag-sorry. Ang sabi ni God, Adam, anong nagawa mo? Ako? Siya kaya? <laughs> Tapos sabi ng babae, ako? Yung ahas? Alam mo, hindi Pilipino yan si Adan eh. Kasi kung Pilipino yan si Adan, naitak na yung ahas na yan, patay yan, maniwala ka. Hanggang ngayon, nasa paraiso pa rin tayo, kaya lang hindi. Hinimas-himas yata yung ahas eh. Kamusta ka na? <laughs> And the woman gave to me, and the, the serpent deceived me, blame shifting. Ang isang resulta ng kasalanan ay ayaw ng accountability. Being wise in your own eyes. Alam nyo, kaya naman kailangan ng community? Kasi paano mo nalamang tama ka? Because you are now the judge of what is right and wrong. You do not trust God, you do not trust others. You don't want to spend time with God. You don't want to spend time with others. That is the effect of sin. Kagaya na lang ng traffic sa cold play kahapon. Ah, mga traffic! Sa cold play, naging warm na. Warm play. Panoorin nyo yung mga tao. Anong sinasabi nila? Eh, kasi yun yung ano eh, bad traffic ito, dito traffic eh. Oh, sinong may problema sa traffic? Turuan! Panoorin nyo yung traffic. Pero ano ang tama? Bigayan lang naman eh. Gusto nyo manood lahat ng cold play, eh. di magbigayan ta. Um, and so, as I wind down to a close, so the nature of losing your holiness, the effect of losing your holiness, but here's the good news, no? The solution for sin. Sabi mo sa katabi, may solution naman yun. Come on, come on, may solution yan. There is a solution. <clears throat> Una, ikaw muna. Pag ikaw ay may shame, susolusyonan mo na yan. Then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves. And weave it together and made themselves loincloths. Alam nyo, sino sa inyo nagkakasala? No? Madalas, ang solusyon natin dyan, fig leaves. Hindi okay, hindi isapat, no? Parang kung ang tingin natin, para lang makabawi tayo sa mga kasalanan natin, ay, ay magsimba tayo, you know, parang bumawi, no? Ang, ang tawag doon, fig leaves theology. Kasi ano sabi ng Hebrews 9? For without the shedding of blood, there can be no forgiveness of sins. So panayang takip mo ng dahon, ala na, hindi naman, ikaw lang may gusto nun. Si God ang nagsabi na ang tanging kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. Ala namang namamatay pagka may dahon na kinakabit sa katawan mo. So lahat ng relihiyon, lahat ng naiisip mo na hindi naman ayon sa Word of God, imbento mo lang yun. Ang tawag doon, fig leaves theology. Meron kang pangunawa, Malamang galing lang din sa iyo kung paano makabawi kay God. Pero itong maganda. Sabi po ng Isaiah 64 verse 6, no, sabi niya, we have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous dead deeds are like polluted garment. At ang sabi, we all fade like leaf. Yan na, no? So doon ang gagaling yung mga ideas na yan. Pero ito talaga yung Solution, Genesis 3.15 I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Alam nyo, ang solusyon sa kasalanan ay manganak. <laughs> It's through childbearing. Meron daw magiging anak yung babae at yung magiging anak niya ay aapakan ang ulo ng ahas. Pero, Pag natapakan niya yung ulo ng ahas, makakagat din naman yung kanyang paa. Ang tawag doon, wounded victor. Victorious, pero wounded. Si Jesus ba victorious on the cross? But was he wounded? So kind of like, nakikita na natin, Genesis pa lang, kung paanong sinusolusyonan ng Diyos ang ating mga kasalanan. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For our sake He made Him to be sin 
who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. There is the great exchange. At alam nyo ba kung anong nangyari? Nilagyan nila ang sarili na ng fig leaves. Alam mo ginawa ni Lord, tinanggal yung dahon. Tika, alam mo, wag ka na magtago. Bigay mo sa akin yung dahon, dali bigay mo. Tapos, pumatay siya ng hayop at dinamitan sila ng balat ng hayop. Pag binalatan niyo ba yung hayop, buhay ba yon o hindi? Patay na yon di ba? So, ibig sabihin, para makoberan sila, may namatay. Uh, may namatay. And the, and the Lord God made for Adam and for his wife garments of skins and clothed them. Alam nyo, hindi enough yung hayop. Kasi pag tao ang nagkasala, sinong kailangan mamatay? Tao din. Abay, katumbas mo ba yung hayop? Hindi. Ang kailangan magbayad, tao rin. Pero hindi lang basta tao. Taong walang kasalanan. Sige, sabihin mo, hindi, ako na lang mamamatay ako para sa kasalanan ko. O oh, sige. Pero it's still not enough. Because we needed a man who has no sin to be sin for us. So that in him, we will have the righteousness of God. And that's the reason why Isaiah 1.18, kakantayin natin yung song in a bit, no? Now more meaningful. Sabi ng Isaiah 1.18, Come now, let us reason together. Says the Lord, Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they are like crimson, they shall become like wool. And so no matter how much shame that you have in your life because of sin, the effects of sin, you're no longer set apart, but you stay apart from God, stay apart from one another, all because ang tingin natin sa sarili natin, hindi na tayo ayos. We're no longer beautiful. And as I close, no, let me encourage you with this. Meron na ba kayong nakitang bride sa wedding day niya na pangit? Meron na kayo na yung, yung di ba, di ba yung katabi mo, para namang mas maganda ka dyan, di ba? Pero pag kinasal na yan, man, ang ganda niyan, talagang wow. Naantay nga nila, di ba? Parang, yan na siya. Ang daming bekas niya na wala. <laughs> na wala pa ano kasi kaya niya tinago. Pero alam niyo ba? But that is where the Lord is bringing us. Restoring our holiness. Revelations 19, 7 to 8 says, let us, let us worship. Let us rejoice. Kasi kahit feeling mo, pangit ka sa harapan ni Lord, nahiya ka. Alam mo bang, We are the bride of Christ. At walang pangit na ikinakasal. Wala. Darating yung time, you will be luminous again. You will glow. Because He has covered you with the blood. Let us rejoice and exalt and give Him the glory for the marriage of the Lamb has come and His bride has made, was made ready. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, nire-ready ka lang ni Lord. You're gonna be white as snow. It was granted, bakit daw siya naging ready? It was granted to her to be clothed by the Lamb. Thereby restoring her purity. Bright and pure. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, you'll be bright and pure one day. You'll be bright and pure. Kasi walang pangit na kinakasal. Wala. At kung si Jesus ang husband, tayo yung bride. And we will be beautiful. Lamentations 3.11 He has made everything and even everyone beautiful in His time. And in fact, actually, sa wedding day natin, sobrang ganda mo na, no? Lumiliwanag ka na. Pero sa totoo lang, kahit naman na-restore na yung glory sa'yo, what captivates you is not your glory, but the glory of the one who has covered your sins. Isa, niisip mo, Ay, ayaw mo, magtatago na ako, magtatago na ako. Pero actually, pag nakita mo that Jesus is not just useful, but He is beautiful, then 
His glory captivates us. And now we're going to be restored from glory to glory. That is the solution for the loss of holiness. You will be bright and pure. How about nothing but the blood of Jesus? Amen? All right, let's just give a clap to the... Pwede ba tayong tumayo? And let us pray, Lord God. Lord, we pray that we're going to see you not just as a means to an end, but that you are beautiful, Lord God. You're beautiful. Lord, this world is a tragedy, Lord God. This world is a disappointment. This world is broken, Lord God. But Lord, as we hear Genesis 3, Lord God, we have hope that you will one day and even now put on us the garment that takes away our guilt and shame, Lord God. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Lord, I pray that in this room, Lord, I know that many people are struggling with hiding from you and hiding from one another, controlling what other people see. Lord, alam ko na even we barely made it, Lord God, sa lugar na ito. Pinilit lang namin by the grace of God nandito kami. And Lord, I pray that tonight is going to be the beginning of the end of our shame. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ and by the blood of Jesus, Lord, his restore our holiness, restore our being set apart so that we will not stay apart, but we will trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. So we're not going to lean on our own understanding in all of our ways we we're going to acknowledge you. And you are going to make our unholy paths, our crooked paths, straight. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. raise up our hands to the heavens Lord God Lord we we send everybody out covered by the blood of the Lamb Lord God Lord we repent of our fig leaves theology Lord God yung things that we do to cover our shame Lord God it's not gonna suffice but Lord you pursued us covered us by the blood of Jesus Christ and so Lord we come out of this place the Lord bless you you're no longer in shame you, you are blessed and He will keep you and He will make His face shine upon you. You're going to be luminous. You're going to glow in the presence of God. And He's going to give you peace. Not shame. Lord, maraming salamat po. We give all the glory and the honor to you. In Jesus' name, 
Amen and amen. God bless you. If you want prayers, I'm here to pray for you. You are now sent to make disciples.